If you're going to do a tribute, then make sure you've got a band that's got a load of brilliant songs. 13 years ago, I had a, a boring desk job when I was playing in pubs. The original guitarist of the Bohemians used to come along and watch us play. And uh, he came up on one, on one occasion and asked if I wanted to, to replace their outgoing singer uh, and be their Freddie Mercury. foolishly decided to go for it and after the first gig I really thought I'd made a huge mistake. The support band took the mickey out of me and you know always wearing a stick on moustache and you know I was having to wear a wig. I thought it was the worst gig I'd ever done but uh, the other lads decided it was fine and I'd already spent £700 of their money on costumes so I thought well, the least I can do is try and give it a crack. Here we are 13 years later and I was doing it full time and I, it was probably the best thing that I ever did. Everything I can do to make myself look and feel like Freddie will enhance my performance on stage. Work out all the moves that you can and all the, the hand gesticulations and the strutting and the twirls and all the rest of it. The reason that's important is because by and large that's what most people remember. They remember Live Aid, they remember uh, Wembley 86. It's very painstaking. <laughs> to say there's a lot of very nice singing going on down there, Driffield. So we'd like you to sing along with this one, if that's okay. Are you gonna sing? You don't know what it is yet. Trust me, you're gonna know this one.
I go out on stage and the audience make me feel like Freddy and then I can make them feel like I'm Freddy. It's kind of almost like a self-perpetuating thing. You need to believe in what you're doing and it's so easy to feel that you're just being an idiot, you know. Certainly in the early days I used to think to myself, what the hell am I doing here, you know. I have to rush around, I have to do all these pirouettes, wear all these costumes and a moustache and all the rest of it. But uh, when you actually get out there on stage, it's the audience that actually lift you into believing that, that it's a good thing. And, and that's what it's all about, really. Between us and the audience, we generate a queen gig and we actually become queen just for a couple of hours. I did my 10 years trying to be a rock star and, uh, and thinking that my songs are the best things that have ever been written. And then I didn't get anywhere with those songs. And then I suppose you just come to a realization that Hey, you know what, my songs probably weren't that great. I don't think about that anymore. I mean, uh, I, I think I crossed that Rubicon many years ago and just decided I was going to perform. It's the best job in the world. I, I get to, to go and, and play to, to theatre audiences, to festival audiences. We get to go all the way around the world. We get to go on cruise ships. The, the appeal of Queen is, is uh, so big. So I'm just grateful that I get to, to perform to the, to the level that, that I do in front of the, the wonderful audiences that I get to play in front of. get bored. I'm so glad I'm able to say that. And also we love the music as well. We love the songs. It sounds like a cliche, but we're all huge Queen anoraks and big fans, you know. You're talking about performing Bohemian Rhapsody, We Will Rock You, Don't Stop Me Now, Another One Bites the Dust, Crazy Little Thing. You know, there, there are so many brilliant songs there that it just keeps us entertained. Uh -huh. 